to the Hapai Toronga Punau, the election campaign, Nationals unveiled a plan for what it calls a massive short-term stimulus. Translation, tax cuts. The party's promising more than $4.5 billion in temporary tax breaks starting in December and ending in March 2022 if it's elected. It says putting more money into people's pockets will reduce economic damage due to COVID and will also help the economy bounce back faster. National also plans to lower the annual cap for new government spending from $2.4 billion to $1.8 billion. But it says that doesn't mean less spending on core services. So how does that work? Well, National's finance spokesperson Paul Goldsmith is here to explain. Good evening. You started off by saying no tax cuts and now you're saying yes to tax cuts. So what specifically has changed? Look, I think it's uh, uh, gradually come over the last few weeks, uh, particularly after the second lockdown, and we've seen the impact that that's had on uh, jobs and on businesses. And and, and more importantly, the... um devastating impact it's had on confidence, particularly business confidence. Now that people wondering if we're going to yo-yo in and out, uh, what does all this mean? Uh, and that's really had a long-term impact on on people's mindsets. Uh, and then we saw confirmed in the prefu uh, the, the, the Treasury's uh, numbers that came out earlier this week that the recession is going to be longer and harder than expected. Uh, um, high unemployment for not just uh, this year, but for the next couple of years. And so uh, our view is that we do need more stimulus. Now, there's different ways of doing it. The government has been uh, shoveling money out in terms of the uh, shovel-ready projects and infrastructure things, and there's a, a, there's a, a role for that. But there comes a point where uh, you're losing uh, the quality of the programmes, and we think the other way to stimulate is to get money back into the hands of people through a tax cut, and that's what we're suggesting. OK, so costing about $4.7 billion, and you're taking that from unspent COVID funds. Is that, yeah. is that responsible? Because what happens if there's another COVID outbreak and you've spent the money on um, sending people to the shops? Well, there's uh, $14 billion, uh, left over in the COVID emergency fund. But aren't you spending $5 billion of that as well, of unspent funds, going to debt reduction? Uh, well, what we've said is that of the $14 billion, uh, we're going to spend nearly $5 billion of that on tax uh, relief, uh, immediate tax relief, which is you know, exactly what the purpose of the fund is to stimulate the economy. Uh, then we've got $9 billion left over. Uh, we're, we're guessing, and it's only a guess, uh, that we may have to spend up to $4 billion of that, and we're, we're working on the assumption we might be able to not spend uh, the remaining $5 billion. But who knows? Nobody knows what's going to happen in the next little while. If we do have to spend the whole $9 billion, then we'll take on more debt. OK, so this is supposed to be a stimulus package, and you've said in your um, media release it will ignite the economy. What's an ignited-looking economy? I mean, how many fewer jobs will we lose as a consequence of this, and what are the measurables here for success? Well, look, I mean, the starting point is uh, we've got, we're looking at, we've lost about 70,000 jobs since March. Uh, the Treasury just a couple of days ago anticipated that we could be losing another 100,000 jobs in the next two two years. And, you know, we don't want to see that happen if we possibly can avoid it. And so we want, uh, we, what we want to see is businesses hiring um, new people and expanding. So the two elements understand of what we're that, about but today, specifically oh, the numbers. So what are the cost benefits in terms of your spending of 4.7 billion on the stimulus package? How many jobs specifically well, will that save? You won't be able to find a, a single economist anywhere in the world who can give you a number on particular jobs. All you can say is that you're going to have a stronger and more robust economy, people more likely to spend if they've got more money in their pockets. Uh, and the second element of the uh, tax package, of course, is uh, increasing the depreciation rates for businesses to encourage them to invest. What we want is businesses investing to grow, uh, and we want uh, people with more money in their pockets to get out uh, and uh, uh, spend that on hospitality and tourism. But how do you know they will? Do how they do you know they will spend it then? Because well, some, for it to work, will, they have like. to spend it. Well, you can't can't tell people what to do. All you can do is give them the option. And uh, you know what we're looking at here is some and we're tar targeted on on particularly on people on the average uh, income around sixty four thousand a year. They'll have an extra three thousand dollars in the hand over the sixteen months. Uh, and of course, if you're a double income family, that could be up to six thousand. dollars Yeah. So more. why not target difference. it? Why not target it in a more focused way? So more money goes to the higher earners because of a proportion of their income, they're going to get more back. Did you mean it to be that way that the higher earners? 
you wanted a, you wanted a um a stimulus package that meant more money would go to higher earners. Why not target it to low income people who might be harder hit here? Well, it's targeted, like I say, uh, so that in terms of percentage income, the, the the group that will benefit the most are those on the average income around sixty four thousand dollars. And uh, uh, they'll get the biggest boost uh, in terms of percentage of their income. And, you know, yeah, we're, we're focusing people who are middle income workers who get up every morning, work hard. So do low income workers. And their family. Yeah, and, so do low uh, income and, workers. So why? Yeah, sure. You could, and, uh, you could have uh, done it a different way. I just want to explore why you didn't do it a different way. You know, well, because. Well, this is the way we chose to do it. Uh, and we, we, we've decided that the best thing we can do is uh, really help uh, middle New Zealand families uh, on, on that average wage. Uh, average income uh, to give them uh, the maximum boost so that they can get through what is a difficult time uh, and so that we can uh, we can get the economy going. And it's If clear. you want to make sure people spend the money, wouldn't it make more sense to make it more targeted and give it to people on lower incomes who are more likely to spend it or do it in a different way, give cash back or give um, rent relief or similar? Well, there's all sorts of options. Uh, the government has obviously uh, increased benefits and has done a lot uh, in terms of free lunches and things like that. And what we've been talking about is that we also think there's a role to help uh, people who are in work and, and uh, give some tax relief as part of the overall uh, stimulus. There's been $50 billion uh, spent uh, uh, nearly since uh, this crisis began, and we think uh, it's quite appropriate to get some money back into the hands of uh, people who are in work. Uh, and, and Do you have any concerns? Relief. Do you have any concerns? that, you know, a higher proportion of this goes to wealthier people. That's more money for them to buy assets and extend the wealth gap. Do you have any concerns around that? Well, the wealth gap is uh, is a broad issue right around the world and related to the very low interest rates that we've got, which are putting up asset prices. And um, uh, that, that is an issue. And the best uh, solution to that in New Zealand, of course, is uh, the biggest asset that most people have is their house. And the best thing we can do there is, is focus on increasing the supply of new houses and reducing the cost of building new houses. And that, that is important. That's why RMA reform is critical. Uh, and it's why, um, you know, we need to be a bit more effective in that area than the government has been with their failed Kiwi build policy. OK, let's look at your spending then. So new operating spending, so that's the new money in the budget. Under national, that would drop from around $2.4 billion to $1.8. So what are you going to cut in order to you know keep your spending in there? Well, we don't need to be cutting anything. And that, this, this is the misinformation and nonsense that you've been hearing from Grant Robertson and the Prime Minister. So to be clear, you are not cut. going to cut any spending? No, well, the, the point is that every year we have allowed $1.8 billion for new additional spending. Uh, and over time, that piles up into a colossal sum. Uh, and but, So there's plenty of room for additional spending to cope with uh, uh, um, population increases or, or wage inflation and all those elements. Uh, but uh, what we've done is uh, been a little bit less uh, expansive than Labour, and it's exactly what people would expect from a national government. We're, we're focused so on getting the best results. So less, less expansive where specifically? Because you say you're not going to cut core public spending, and you've identified that well, as health, yeah. education, yeah. and basically law and order. So where are you going to be skimping? Well, we're not, not going to be skimping. We're going to be focusing on results for that spending. Uh, and we've got the resources to spend uh, extra, uh, you know, to continue to increase spending in those core government areas. Uh, but, you know, what we're working through is a clear balancing between the need for short-term stimulus through the tax relief, uh, continuing to invest in core public spending at a critical time like this, and then taking over the decade or so, uh, getting us back onto a prudent debt level faster than the government. The government has no plans to get... Uh, OK, I want to stick with your plans. plans. Your plans. You say we won't yep. be afraid to eliminate wasteful, low-value for money spending. So give sure. me three examples of that that you're going to burn. Well, well, the, the obvious one is uh, the free fees policy that was Labor's brought already getting rid of that, yep. No, they're, not, they're, not, they're not. They, 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 they brought it in and they said it was going to increase access to tertiary education and fewer students went. Uh, and they've just in the last two days conceded defeat and are not extending it to the second and third year, but they're still hanging on to the first year. We're going to have to eliminate that. Uh, and um, that, because it is poor quality Next two. and it's not actually getting anything extra. Well, you know, we've, we've, uh, we're also uh, going to means test the baby bonus that they brought in uh, so that that is targeted to those who really need it. And then, you know, look, we'll, we'll be more cautious over time with additional spending. And that, you know, that makes sense.
So you're tightening the belt. Okay. So you're suspending Superfund contributions indefinitely, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. you are still committed, are you, to raising the super age to 67? Are you going to have to do that faster than the 15 years that no, you were thinking no, of? No, no, we'll, we'll keep with that timetable. Uh, that gives people very uh, you know, plenty of time to prepare, uh, and uh, it, it reflects the fact that we're living longer, healthier lives. Uh, nothing has to happen immediately on superannuation, but I think uh, over time it's the responsible thing to do. And uh, so you're I remember abso- John absolutely being... committing to not moving that um, 15 yep. year deadline any closer. You promise no, no, you're not no, going to do that. There's no need to be doing that. Uh, we, uh, the, our universal superannuation is a very good scheme. Uh, it is affordable over time, so long as our, our country continues to grow. And that's why we've got a real focus on growing the economy, getting jobs, and um, getting us back on our feet. You know, we've got every confidence that New Zealand will get back on its feet. Uh, we're entrepreneurial people. The world wants our goods. Uh, it's just a question of how quickly we do that. And okay, our, in that vein... That under our policies, we mm, get back faster. In that vein, you say you're going to restart contributions to the super fund when the government debt is restored to prudent levels. What is that number so that we know when the payments are going to start back? Up. Well, uh, as a percentage look, of GDP, what does it need to hit for you to start paying that money back in? Well, well I mean, what we've uh, signalled in our current plan is we'll get back to about 35% of GDP. There is no magical number. For a long time, we thought it was around 20%, uh, but uh, the, the incredibly low interest rates and uh, the so you can't commit the world. to restarting those payments at a particular point in time. You say prudent levels, well, but you're not prepared yeah. to define what prudent levels is. I'm, of no, I'm not going to come up with a debate a date on on radio today, uh, other than the fact that we would like to start. Uh, returning to uh, contributions when we can. But at the moment, it just we, we don't think we should be borrowing money to put effectively to put onto international stock exchanges, which is where it's invested at the moment. We think it's better to put that money into infrastructure in the New Zealand right here, right now, and also into the hands of New Zealanders from the 1st of December with our tax relief. Appreciate your time this evening. That's National's Finance Spokesperson Paul Goldsmith.